Hello and welcome to the Workout of the Week. My name is Tommy Matthews and we've got Andy Phillips here who's going to do our demonstrations for us. Today it's a really interesting workout. It's all about developing explosive leg speed. And what we're going to do is go through a series of different exercises, talk a little bit about the science behind it, give you the training methods, and it's really important that you follow on with the blog as well to understand properly how to implement this form of training. There's a lot going on here, there's a lot of different exercises, some key techniques that you need to take on board, but the training philosophy as well is really important. The idea essentially to develop maximal power and to develop speed at the same time is to work through various exercises with varied loads which allow your body to move at different rates of velocity or speed. Okay, So you can apply maximal force to your body whilst moving at different rates of speed or velocity. And that's the key, the key focus when developing maximal power. So you'll be essentially trying to move from different exercises with max load, like exercise like the deadlift, into things like the clean or the power clean, where the load drops a little bit, but the force output and the speed increases. Um, then moving on to maybe more body weight exercises like box jumps, uh, working with uh, ball, the vert ball to apply maximal power and force and speed at the same time. And then we've got a little special exercise at the end, which you may not have seen, but I quite like for developing um, good leg speed. So I'm going to go through them now. That's a little bit about the theory. There's more on the blog, which I want you to follow as well. The first exercise is the deadlift. We're going to use the deadlift for two things. Obviously for max weight, so we're developing maximal strength. And developing maximal, maximal strength is hugely important when it comes to leg speed and force production. Um, you need to have that strength to be able to produce force production or max force. So Andy's going to set himself up in a deadlift. The first reason is for the maximal strength. The second reason, reason is a little bit of a, um, a phenomenon, really. It's called post-activation potentiation. And it's a method of firing up the neurological system before performing a more explosive movement. That explosive movement would be potentially a weightlifting movement like a clean or a body weight plyometric movement like a box jump. So what Andy's going to do is he's going to utilize this deadlift for PAP, post-activation uh, potentiation. We're only going to be doing two reps. The science out there at the moment, off you go Andy for these two reps, the science out there at the moment is is not set in stone. Between one to three reps is generally considered as a good method of getting that PAP. At the same time as that, rest there for a second, at the same time as that, you need to make sure it's at least 80% of your max weight, so for your lift. So you need to make sure you've got 80% of your max weight. You only need to do it once for one set, and you need to give yourself about between 90 seconds up to maybe five minutes worth of recovery before you then take part in your next exercise. So first of all, this exercise is going to be very challenging. It's going to fatigue you quite a lot. Okay? Once you've followed on from that, you're going to recover. You're going to hopefully keep that neural stimulation to then go into your power clean okay? or maybe your plyometric jump. So the idea here is that Andy's performing two repetitions of this. Um, he's just done a quick demo there. So if he's going to follow the sequence now, he'd go straight into his power clean in about let's say two, three, four minutes perhaps. Okay, but just for the sake of the day, we'll talk a couple of um, key teaching points for the deadlift before we go any further. So let's just have a quick look at that setup position. So toes are underneath the bar. He's what he wants to be able to see all of his toes. He's going to sit his hips back. He's going to take a grip of the bar. Okay, he's going to get his grip first. He's going to get strong there. And then from that position, he's going to sit into it, take a deep breath in, create intrathoracic pressure, and then drive through the hips and first pull and into the second pull and full extension at the top. Okay, so that's essentially the deadlift. We can rest there and we can move on. So we're going to strip the plates now. We're going to go into the power clean. With the power clean, obviously, you're going to reduce the weight from the deadlift. It's not going to be anywhere near the same. So if Andy's aiming for a max deadlift of, let's say, 200 kilos to keep it easy, he's probably going to want to be deadlifting um, to do the correct, to get the correct uh, activation and neuromuscular stimulation. He's probably going to be wanting to working around 160, 170 kilos. So it's a pretty heavy deadlift. He needs to recover from that. So once he's recovered, he's ready to go into his power cleans. For the power cleans now, he's looking to apply maximal force with a slightly lower load, but with a more dynamic, more explosive exercise. Greater range of motion as well. Okay, so we've reduced the weight here. He's aiming for three repetitions of this. So on, off you go, Andy, your three reps, please. Just let's obviously remember that he's had a three-minute, four-minute rest. Okay, so he's going to perform three of these as explosive as possible, trying to get as much force out there as possible. Driving through, power, good. Last one. Good. 
Okay, excellent. So those are your three reps of your power clean. We're going to move the bar away and we're going to bring the plier boxes in. Next drill is a max height box jump. Okay, so this is a plyometric drill. Obviously now with just using your body weight, the speed of this movement becomes even greater. So we're applying a lot of force to our body, but it's the speed of the movement which is the, which is the important thing. Okay, so you're going to try and find your max height and you're going to be working for three repetitions of that. Again, rest periods are very important. A minimum of 90 seconds, I'd go up to th three minutes if possible. It may take a long time to do this, but the results and the benefits out of it are immense if you're wanting to develop explosive leg speed. And that's obviously the outcome here. Okay, so don't try and smash yourself by doing everything really quickly. That's not what it's about. It's about trying to apply, apply maximal force to your body. So you do need recovery. So let's take it that Andy's had plenty of recovery now. He's had plenty of rest. He's gonna do three maximal box jumps. Okay, when you're ready. Good stuff. We should have made that a little bit higher. That was a little bit too easy. Two more. Excellent. Okay. Last jump. Nice. And jump off. Obviously working with our plier softbox, we've got, we've got no issues when it comes to maximal jumps. The softbox is always, you know, safety is, is a key thing when jumping on boxes. So you can always push um, the height. With a soft box, you've got no issues about people getting it wrong. If they do get it wrong, they're not going to damage their shins. So the plier box, the soft box is a great option for that. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to move on to the vert ball exercise. We take those boxes away for a second, Andy, just move them back a little bit. That's perfect. Okay, we're going to look at the vert ball exercise. This exercise is, again, about creating force and power through the lower body. Um, it's a really good one for loading up the lower body and focusing on the concentric phase of the contraction. So he's going to sit back in his hips, he's going to get the ball between his legs, he's going to try and get it as far behind his legs as he can whilst keeping a good grip of the ball and he's going to be throwing the ball up into my sternum. I'm going to have my hands here, this is real maximal explosive work. So you'll see Andy's position when he finishes with the ball, he's going to release the ball and he's going to end up with his body and his arms all the way up through his head. So it's a really nice explosive exercise for the lower body. Ready? We're going to go for six of these. Off we go. Nice. More power. Come on, get, let's get some in there. Get some power. There we go. Make me work. Don't make it easy on me, Andy. Come on. Here we go. Yes, now we're talking. Good. More explosive. Come on, on, on the toes. Nice. All the way through. Drive through. Two more. Good. Last one. Excellent stuff, okay, move that away. So you would have seen the movement there. It's very important as a coach there, I'm in a really strong position. If I push my hands down like that, the ball's not gonna come flying up and hit me. Okay, it's very important that he finishes the movement off, finishes up with this really big range of motion. So that's exercise number four in the sequence. You'll notice the difference in the pattern. Okay, big heavy load, reducing the load now, increasing the velo velocity. Final exercise, little special one here. This is all about hip flexion, okay? It's a single leg hip flexion drill using a power band. Andy's gonna set himself up here. I'm gonna aid this exercise by giving him something to support his hand on, okay? So the drill here is all focusing on this, just bring it down to your knee for me, just down to the bottom of the knee, just above the knee, there you go, okay? The focus here is on driving through and creating leg speed through the lower body. So Andy's gonna hold on to here for a bit of support, off you go Andy, and then just practice that drive through the hip and the knee. There we go, okay, get it, yeah, get it stuck down there. Okay, boom, there we go, good. Let's get those hips right through now every time you come up. So you need to be standing up tall, keep the back foot on the floor for me, back foot on the floor, that's it, and drive. There we go, more speed now, come on, more speed. Really quick, that's the one, now we're talking. Okay, so now he's got into it, he's got that speed, he's got that power, we're gonna do 12 on each side, okay? Really snappy, off we go. Up, down, up, down, up, down, good, good, good. And this is really focusing on firing up through the hip flexors, all about the hip flexors, okay? You're gonna be burning after those 12 reps, good. Should just swap over there, other side. So as soon as the foot touches the floor, it's bounding back up again. As soon as the toes touch the floor, you're straight back up again, ready? Bang, go, boom, good, drive, drive, good stuff, excellent. So if, you, um, if you're learning to box jump, if you're learning to clean, into full cleans, into snatches, anything that requires you to get under the bar quickly um, or to come into hip flexion quickly, you need to get those hip flexors fired up and activated. So that's gonna really help that drill. 
Okay, so that are, those are the five exercises that I want you to have a go at. I want you to read the blog because it explains a lot more detail about how to do it properly and also a little bit about the science behind it. You need to appreciate the science as to why you do it in that pattern and also why you do it with the recovery periods that you require. I've gone through that really quickly with Andy just for the sake of this clip, but for you guys doing it correctly, obviously space it out and do it properly. Hope you enjoy that because it's, um, for me, that, that form of training is immensely beneficial for a variety of different clients. Okay, especially anybody looking to get into any um, Olympic weightlifting, uh, powerlifting, any sports, any explosive sports. It's all going to benefit. It's going to benefit all of those guys. So have a go at those drills. Any questions about that? Send us an email. Drop us a Facebook or a social media post. Um, ask us those questions. We're always happy to help out. Hope you enjoy that stuff. Um, and thanks to Andy for uh, giving us some good demonstrations there. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next workout of the week.